General Burnside was ready to attack on December 13, 1862. The place he targeted as his main objective was the southern end of the Confederate line at Prospect Hill. The troops that were going to lead this attack were led by General William B. Franklin. Franklin had 65,000 men, almost half of Burnside's army, arrayed along the Bowling Green Road or the Richmond Stage Road. But the orders that were sent to Franklin were badly worded, and Franklin interpreted them to mean that he was only supposed to send a small force of about 8,000 men. The spearhead of his attack would be led by General George Gordon Meade, and they would be targeting a finger of woods that jutted out into the midst of a big open field, which later on would become known as the Slaughter Pen. In support of George Meade's attack would be the division of General John Gibbon. These were two of the smallest divisions in the entire Union Army, which really didn't give it the momentum or the impetus that Burnside had really designed. As General Meade and General Gibbon's troops arrayed for battle, Union artillery formed in front of them, getting ready to bombard the Confederate position. But before they could even fire their first shot, they were preempted by one lone Confederate cannon that fired from far off on their left flank. That was the gun of Major John Pelham of the Stuart Horse Artillery. He single-handedly was able to preempt the Union attack and hold them at bay for an hour before he ran out of ammunition and had to withdraw. Once he fell back, the Union artillery redirected its focus to the heights and started to bombard them for the next hour. After they assumed they had softened up the position, Meade and Gibbon's men moved forward. That's when things got really dicey. The Union troops had to encounter a number of obstacles getting across this open field. Not 200 yards into the field, they encountered a ditch fence a large depression in the ground that compelled the men to literally break ranks, climb down into the bottom, muck through the bottom, and then pull themselves out the other side. They were thrown into complete confusion, and it took some time to put them back into ranks. As they moved even further into the field, they came under direct artillery fire from the Confederates, which stalled them for a good hour. It's only at noon that the Union troops are going to be able to make one more lunge across the field, and this time, get there.